So this is my fourth and decidedly final take of this video. Um, hello everybody, this is Daniel with All That Tech here, uh, just doing a quick uh, review of the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt. Here's the title states. So I'm just going to go over uh, my impressions of the product for my use case. Um, what my use case was and my intentions of getting the product, what 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 I was expecting of it, and so forth, um, and my overall determination. So um, I actually just purchased the AudioQuest Dragonfly Cobalt. I received it yesterday. Um, so I received it, um, ordered it from abt.com. Um, it was delivered, and uh, so I've had roughly 48 hours of of time with the product um, so uh, just for starters I'm gonna kinda go over my impressions of the the product itself, kinda the build quality and everything um, and forgive the lack of uh, production <laughs> quality here I'm just shooting this on the fly and uh, just uh, want to get some information out here because I feel like my opinion on this is different than a lot of people's. Um, so it really is, as you've seen, I'm sure you've looked and seen probably, if you're looking at this video, I'm sure you've looked at a lot of other reviews, done some research and things like that. I mean, the quality is, is good. Um, it's a metal uh, housing chassis, if you will. Some people have said that this uh, port has some play um, I don't really feel anything there personally for the headphone jack. Um, just a 3.5, no other options for 3.5, or a, a quarter inch rather, or anything like that. It, just like your standard flash drive, basically. Um, it's blue, cobalt blue, if you will. So, hence the name and the cap here. So, um, comes with a couple of accessories. So, one is the Dragon Tail uh, adapter, so it's a USB-A um, output so to a um, USB-C port on the other end for to you know input to your phone or laptop. Because I know you know there are laptops out there like different MacBooks and things like that that just have USB-C or primarily USB-C ports. So that's that, and also comes with a little leather pouch if you feel like putting it in there. Um, and this is, from what I have read, the smallest of the Dragonfly products. Probably not by a whole lot, I'm sure. Um, but they're, I mean, they're all flash drives basically. But I mean, the build is nice. It is um, at least assembled in the United States, which is pretty cool. Um, I can appreciate them at least taking the initiative to do part of it uh, stateside. There's a something, you know, kind of nice and uh, prestigious uh, about that. So, um, so that's just cool. I mean, it's a they they very clearly state that it's with imported. Um, parts or what, whatever you want to put. Well, I can read the box and tell you exactly how they word it. So, yep. Assembled in the USA f from imported parts. Yeah, exactly. So, parts came from China, built here, or Taiwan, or wherever. So, yeah. Um, but my use case, so we're going to go kind of over a uh, use case here. Um, I had a couple reasons that I got it so um, the two together kind of became the catalyst as to I did, me pulling the trigger to go ahead and uh, give it a shot so uh, one I recently uh, purchased the Shure IEMs the SE425 um, I've had these in the past I didn't own them in the past they, they were my brothers but he didn't wasn't using them all that much because um, they are kind of difficult to use in a 
like a, a work scenario, which is typically what he did, because he had to still has to be able to hear somewhat, and these make you pretty well deaf um, with the the noise isolation, which is great because that's what they're supposed to do. Um, but not perfect for every scenario. You need to be able to hear people and uh, communicate stuff like that. These can be a little troublesome, but um, that's not a fault of the IEMs. It's just, you know, you need to know what you're going to be doing and know what to expect from a particular product. Um, so I've been using these um, pretty much for mobile use. Um, they uh, I've been using my phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, which is what this is being recorded on as well, um, and it's using the headphone jack, so obviously the quality of the headphone jack is mediocre at best. It's 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 a phone headphone jack. It's definitely not priority number one. Um, so that's that's part of why I got it. Just thought I would uh, see what kind of benefits I could get just on the go as far as using these. Um, for as much or as little as that may actually be the case. So but uh they are kind of my go to. It has the you know the communication cable they call it. Uh so it has a line in uh in line mic along with controls for volume up, down, play pause, calls and, and that kind of thing. So I think it's nice. Um so that was number one. Uh, and two, I was interested in the um, MQA rendering um, prospects of the device because um, I am I'm a title subscriber and there is becoming more and more um, albums and songs that are available in master quality, you know, some of which I was I'm kind of surprised to see on there some, you know, much less known artists and some artists that I listen to. I, there's not a ton of stuff that's in my like my playlist and my saved music that is in master quality. But I'm like, you know, it, it would be nice to, to to hear the difference. I just want to see um, if it's that much better versus just the hi-fi, uh, the the 44.1. So and actually having a deck that can render it versus just having to rely on the software itself. Um, so those were the two two reasons, and it, it, in terms of, I mean, on top of hopefully being able to do it on the go, um, with the uh, the DAG for potentially MQA from the phone, because they do have master quality in the uh, Android app. Um, my desktop solution, which I'll kind I kind of have to um, talk about here, but the whole reason I was mo most interested in the master quality part of it is um, I do have a my desktop solution, which you're kind of looking at part of here. So my Odyssey LCD2 headphones, uh, those are my daily drivers that, that I use um, every day, you know, whenever I'm home. Um, and my amp, or amp DAC, if you will, is a uh, Odyssey Deckard. Uh, so I've had both of these for, you know, a few years. Um, but the um, the DAC on there obviously doesn't support MQA. Very few DACs support MQA at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so that that's I figured maybe you know if this is as good as everyone says it is. I know it's a, just a USB stick, so I had my um, questions and concerns about it. Maybe um, I could use this as a line out to my amplifier and uh, you know use it as an amp, a standalone amp, and this is a standalone DAC, um, just to see. I mean, I, I didn't have the highest of hopes or anything like that, um, but I mean, it's it's got some glowing, glowing reviews, and people say, you know, I used it as a a, a, a preamp or or whatever, you know, to, to supply my power amp, and said that it sounded great. Okay, well, I was like, well, I mean, these people are saying it, and there's a lot of people with some really, really glowing reviews about this product. Um, why not give it a shot myself? So I did. So um, I purchased it from abt.com, ABT Electronics. Great um, people to do business with. Unfortunately, I don't live in the Chicago land area. Uh, if I did, I would, you know, I mean, not that you can go there now. Uh, COVID-19 sure has put a damper on doing pretty much anything in our daily lives. Um, but they have a store in Chicago land, but I mean, I just do online commerce with them. Um, and I've been really happy with them. I've, I've gotten a good amount of my home theater uh, stuff from them and some 
some I think it's mostly been home theater stuff. Either way, I really enjoy doing business with them. I think they're a great company, so I'd recommend them. Um, but that's where I got the uh, Cobalt from. Um, and also, I should mention, because I'm going to have to bring this up a little bit later, as I have the um, AudioQuest Evergreen uh, cable, 3.5 to RCA. I, I got it with the Cobalt for that whole line-out um, prospect that I was talking about, um, which I'll just... It's right here. Um, way too much money for a cable. Um, especially, I mean, it's just, I don't know, AudioQuest is just crazy with a lot of their products with cables and stuff like that. Um, while we're on the topic of cables and stuff like that, there's no argument about cables. I'm not going to get into that. So, I mean, I, I, I do think that the, the, this kind of money for this kind of cable and this length of cable, that's out. Um... But one company I would recommend, and I tried to see if they had something like this, but I couldn't find a uh, any kind of product, any one of you know something with a 3.5 with an RCA termination, or even just like an adapter or something, just like a a short adapter that would let me use a, a, one of their RCA cables that I also have. Um, Blue Jean cables, they are excellent. Um, they uh, make their cables, assemble their cables and all that in the United States, and they are super high quality. I have a subwoofer cable from them and a set of RCA, RCA cables. There's definitely a, a, a uptick in the quality because I was using a really, really cheap uh, subwoofer cable, and j just because I needed a short run and the only one I had was super long, so I just had a cheap, basically, RCA for my sub uh, interconnect, and... Um, I got one of their, the shortest one I could find, um, which was still a little long, of like their, their subwoofer cable, and man, what a difference. There, there's a, it's, it's a much better cable. It, it actually it gets significantly louder than the other cable did. I know it wasn't, you know, if I compared it to the, the super long subwoofer cable I have, Media Bridge, I think it is, you know, it may have been pretty close. It may have been the same. I don't know. But I can tell there's a, a higher quality on that cable. And it's, you know, like I said, it's made or at least assembled. It, it made as much as possible in the United States. And they're, you know, an independent company. So I can appreciate that. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent. Unfortunately, I do that. Uh, but so we talked about my use case for the Cobalt. So now I'm going to kind of give my impressions on the usage. So... I uh, used it with my phone with the adapter, like we were talking about, and uh, I mean it, it sounded pretty good. I was using it with the IAMs. It's really primarily what I've been using with the, for um, with the Cobalt, um, and it, it does a lot better than the built-in headphone jack on there. It does a lot better than the headphone jack on my phone. I tested it with a laptop, um, not my personal laptop. But but it was like an Acer Nitro 5, I think. So I just kind of compared the two because um, I was uh, with my brother and uh, just was doing some... So I had to use a laptop for a second anyway, so I figured I'd just test it since I had it with me. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's a significant difference. So with this on the phone uh, though and this is something you'll probably look and see in reviews um, at least some written reviews I don't know if they say anything in any of the video reviews um, the output that I get using the adapter on my phone is quite a bit less than it is on a laptop or a, like a desktop because and the reason I'm, I'm gonna just go on a whim here and say that's because since it's only using USB power is the only source of power it has is whatever USB is feeding it you know the USB output on a, a PC is gonna be significantly more than you're gonna get on your phone it just makes sense because this phone's a lot smaller has a lot smaller battery is not gonna you know kill itself by powering something over USB, there's some pretty heavy limitations on a phone. And that's fine. I mean, it still did plenty to uh, power the the IEMs here. Um, I I I accidentally maxed out the volume one time because um, I I plugged it in and I didn't realize the volume was maxed. And I hit play. Um, that sounded bad. Uh, it, it it was way too loud. So regardless of how clean the signal could be. You, you don't want to listen to it that loud. It's just, it's painful. It's its going to be, you know, 
your ears are are uh, are precious, you know. <laughs> and it, it sounded it just sounded bad, you know. Music if it's too loud, it's just gonna sound bad. Um, but uh, one thing I, I did right the, the night before I got this, because I mean, there's a lot of really this just five star, hundred percent, no 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 quabbles at all about this product. Uh, reviews out there saying that it's the best thing since sliced bread, basically. You know, it's portable. It's really portable. I'll give it that. Um, and it, it, it has its place, I suppose. Uh, but um, the, the price is too high. I, I, I'll say that much. It's far too high. Um, but either way, um, there. what I was trying to get at is there is a, a review which I'm going to um, link in the description there uh, that actually gives measurements of the output on the uh, the this cobalt here and uh, it, it shows distortion on it There's some some pretty heavy distortion um, which I can pretty much say a hundred percent that that is true um, and I can actually hear it excuse me um, so and that's on both um, the a, a PC or or that lower um, output on a phone. Um, w w the phone's definitely less, I would say, because it's not getting as much, um, you know, out, not not pushing as hard. Uh, but uh, so that th there there's definitely a a, a bit of you you can notice it. I it, it's I mean if you've heard it you've heard it, and if you look at the graphs I can I can back those up with what I've heard. Um, now, so that's one thing. So if I was using this on my phone, I could, if I had about 50% volume, since this doesn't have its, uh, you know, independent volume control, it just bases what I've, whatever the source volume is with the whole bit perfect volume, they say. Um, so 100% on whatever device you're using should be 100% output on this and, you know, vice versa. It just, they, oops, um, it just matches whatever the source is. So, um, so there's that. I mean, it, it drives the IAMs, which is really the most part of the only thing I've been able to use. There's another set of headphones I can tell you about. I can't use it with my LCD 2s here because I only have a quarter inch, um, um, cable. So, termination cable. Uh, so I can't use it with that. Uh, so, um, now I'm just going to move on to the, 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 the computer part of it. So I'm going to speak on it as a amp deck from a laptop or desktop first. Um, it, so coming from, the, at least on the, the IEMs, uh, you don't have a whole lot of um, room to work with the volume on the uh, the dragonfly I keep picking that up I gotta stop um, you, you don't have a whole lot of room to work with the volume so for the most part the highest the highest that I could bring it up was like 30 out of a hundred on on the dragonfly maybe 35 or, or 40 on some quieter stuff um, but it it was it was almost inconsistent because I swear like I, I hooked it up and it seemed like it was incredibly shrill and like it just sounded like a like a mess this this a screechy mess on uh, some tracks at even like 20 um and it just i wouldn't say it sounded good cuz and, and you know you you're my thought and someone's argument might be that oh you're using IEMs so they have um a low impedance so they're going to get a lot louder and potentially distort faster. That may be true. That might be true. But I also have the Odyssey Deckard, like I was mentioning, and it puts out a ton of power. Um, it can put out up to four watts of power to <coughs> a set of headphones. Um, so it, it has a ton, a ton of power on tap. Um, I've used these IEMs with the Odyssey Deckard with a a you know converter that you know makes this a, a quarter inch um and I'm able to put it on the low gain obviously I actually I I use these on low gain too just to you know get the cleanest possible sound um and I mean I can turn it all the way up on low and but it's still that can get kind of uncomfortably loud even on on these sometimes um and these are planar magnetics they're a lot harder to drive than these are going to be or m most headphones um 
I, th I think they're, I, I don't really know the impedance off the top of my head. These, I think these are around 60, but I could be wrong on that. Either way. So they're, but either way, the, with, with the type of technology that these headphones use uh, versus, you know, the Shure IEMs, um, it's a lot different. It, the, the, these are much harder to drive than these. But either way, with the low gain on there, I can bring these up to half, half, uh, volume the the bring the dial up halfway um at that point it's as loud as i want it to be or louder than i want it to be on the iem sometimes but it doesn't sound distorted or like everything is just meshing together it it so it's it's th with that being said i would be inclined to say that this the the dragonfly cobalt um is either distorting really early on, which, I mean, it does distort, especially when you hit those higher registers. I would personally say that if you're pushing it past 75, everything at that point is pretty heavily distorted and clipped, so you're having basically a square wave at that point, um, or close to a square wave. You're, you're just flattening, flattening out that those those curves, those valleys that are you know, that you're supposed to have in your frequ frequency response. Um, but, you know, this was not driving them anywhere near as loud as the Deckard has and the the quality of the sound was significantly less and it was just it was distorted and it was it was unlistenable um if I switched to a different song that didn't have as many you know highs and things like that it was a little better but I mean it's it, it wasn't something that made me want to keep the product um so that was kind of my experience with that um, now, for the second uh, reason of having it, like I said, I was uh, interested in the, you know, the MQA rendering aspect of it. Um, so I'm going to touch on that on the the phone side, on the Android side of it. So the Dragonfly fly, um, icon, if you will, um, it's an LED on the um, the stick itself. I don't know if I have the book here. I did a moment ago, um, but I may have put it somewhere. Either way, so the this the dragonfly there lights up, just depending on what the incoming you know audio signal is. So it's supposed to be green for 44.1 kilohertz, which is CD quality. Then it goes up to blue for 48, I think, and and so on. But either way, the main thing we we're going to focus on here is. Um, it's supposed to be uh, magenta purple whenever it has a MQA uh, coming in. So, and then at that point, it's supposed to do a uh, unfold of the MQA file. And uh, that's one thing I was interested in to see if it's any better than you know just standard hi-fi CD quality, like I believe I mentioned earlier. Um, on the phone, those lights on there don't match up with what you get on a PC. Um, and that's on di multiple PCs. Um, f for whatever reason, that they're, they're totally different. Um, and actually, whenever I have a MQA, uh, like a master quality track playing from Tidal, or even I actually used a uh, a recommended app that that um, AudioQuest mentions in their their uh, their book, which I really wish I could find. But it's called like USB Audio Pro or something like that. Um, if if you have any issues with the kind of you know the signal that you're getting on here, um, so I actually downloaded that, paid for it, which I think is ridiculous that you have to pay for this. It's an app that will play any music files you have on the phone, but also be able to connect to like your title, Cubas, whatever, and and like link that account in there. Um, the interface on it was absolutely terrible. The app was eight dollars, and then they bait and switch you because I got it thinking I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and try it for the whole MQA thing, see if I can get it, you know, to show the right light, and, and uh, so that way I know I'm getting the actual, getting that master quality, playing through the full thing. Uh, it doesn't, it still didn't do it. Um, whenever you actually open the app though, and you hit on like the MQA option in the settings uh it tells you you have to buy a additional uh mqa render uh plugin i guess if you want to call it that um and that was another 399 so that was another four dollars 
So that is some shady business practices. Um, like I said, the interface on the program was absolutely atrocious. Um, it didn't tell you what the quality that was playing was whenever I had it hooked up through the USB. Um, it didn't change the kind of lights I got at all, so it was getting the exact same output that it was before. So, oh, I found the book. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it wasn't a good experience. Luckily, with the Google Play app, I was able to uh, refund both of those purchases. Um, I would not recommend it. So the fact that they recommend it in this book here, um, that's a little disheartening. Um, either way, so I'm just going to go over the, the colors real quick. So red, if you plug it in on red, that's standby. This means you have it plugged in and it doesn't have any audio coming in. Green. Green, like I was mentioning, is 44.1, so CD quality, which would, you know, typically be the hi-fi option on Tidal. Blue is 48 kilohertz. Uh, that's what it actually lights up all the time, but by default on my phone. Um, amber, or I, I will we'll call it orange, is uh, 88.2 kilohertz. Magenta is 76. Okay, sorry. So magenta is pink. I said magenta purple earlier. Sorry. So pink is 96 uh, kilohertz magenta, um, and then purple is MQA. So that's your master quality. Um, and hold on, I just want to I just want to see real quick if it mentions anything about that app. I just want to get the exact name so you all know what to not purchase. At least in my opinion, if you like that app and it works for you, that's great. Didn't for me. Um, Yeah, USB Audio Player Pro. That, that's what they called it. Um, yeah, I, I personally would not recommend that app at all. It's 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 bad. It's it has a terrible interface. If nothing else, the interface is god awful. Um, but either way, so like I said, I get blue constantly whenever I use it on my phone. Um, whenever I play a master quality track, it lights up white, which is not a listed color there. Um, I was sitting here thinking to myself, I was like, well, maybe there's, it's one of these other colors and it's just not showing correctly. And that really doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe it's, I suppose there's an incredibly small likelihood that it could be magenta, but either way, I wasn't getting the purple MQA. Um, so that was a little di um, disheartening and disappointing. Um, whenever I plug into a computer, I do get the correct corresponding colors. So, um, you know, like I said, red if it's on standby, green if it's playing just a, a 44.1 like CD quality track uh, through Tidal. I do get the purple for MQA, so it works the way it's supposed to on a computer. Um, I did check and see if there were any, because it's, it's a driverless uh, amp DAC, uh, that's where you're able to use it on a phone. Um, I checked to see if there was a firmware update or anything for it, and there wasn't. The only thing they have any updates for is the uh, Dragon Dragonfly black and red, but not the, the cobalt. So, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so, so that that's kind of the experience on the phone. It do, it it is better than pretty much any. Uh, headphone output you're going to have on your head on your phone. The only phones that I would say that would have as good, if not maybe a little bit better um, output. I really need to pause this and make sure it's still recording. Okay, yeah, it's still going. Um, the only phone that I say might might be able to match it or come close is going to be one of the LG. Uh, G or V series of phones, so um, started on the 5, so LG, G5, G6, G7, G8, and I think they're on like GX, they call it now, or something, the, th the thin Q phones, um, and then like LG V20, V30, V40, and like V50, um, those are the only ones I know that might come close, because those actually have MQA uh, renderers in them as well, which is really cool. Um, and I do appreciate I, I I just wish that the LG software was better. Samsung just has it down better, in my opinion, and I prefer their, uh, just the way the phone works a little bit better than LG. Um, so that's my take on the, the as far as the cellular device, which I was going to be. And also, uh, if you have an iPhone, you will need to get, purchase your own USB adapter for it, like a Lightning to uh, USB-A 
Um, I think they call it the camera adapter for an iPhone. They don't include that in the box. Thankfully, they do at least include the USB-C one in the box. Um, so now, to get with my experience on a PC a little more, because I kind of mentioned some of my experience on uh, using a, a laptop or a, a desktop with it. Um, it I, I personally, j just to, to get this out of the way, um, in my opinion, do not. Do not get the Cobalt. It's not worth your money. At most, an absolute most, and I don't think I would pay $200 for it, but absolute most, I would probably just get the red. Um, I think that I personally, if I were to get another one of these, because I think for mobile usage on a phone um, or a laptop, if you want a really portable solution, there is something to be said. Um, a black would probably be the best because based off what I've kind of seen on some reviews um, once because that puts out 1.5 volts this puts out 2.1 volts in the same way with the red but if you exceed that 1.5 that's when it starts to distort um, so if you look at it from that perspective the um, extra 0.6 volts you get on the end there if they're distorting what good are they it does you absolutely no good. Um, but while I haven't looked into it a whole lot here, and I really, if I'm considering, you know, having something for a portable for my phone, a uh, little better amplification and DAC, probably worth looking into a different um, brand altogether. Because I've seen some, you know, some cheaper options that, that actually beat out, like the Dragon dragonfly black some cheaper options like that are a quarter of the price or half the price that are better um you just want to make sure that it works for your use case because i need to make sure if i get something that's going to work with my you know my android i'll be able to use some kind of usb c dongle to get it to work and some of those don't work that way they only work on pc so um either way so if that's if you just want to know uh my opinions on whether or not you should get it that's it um but if you wanted to kind of know my experience with using it as like a a, a standalone DAC with a line out, then um, stick around for a little bit longer. Um, I know this video is kind of long, so I apologize. Uh, but uh, it is what it is. I'm recording it, and uh, you know, maybe get a little more information than some people need, but that's okay. Um, so as far as trying to use it for the line out, like I was mentioning, I do have the Odyssey Deckard uh, amp DAC, and I was curious about the MQ MQA uh, portion of it. Um, and with the price and the glowing reviews that it was getting everywhere, um, well, I thought to myself, maybe there's something to it. Maybe the DAC portion of it, even though it is a you know USB only solution with no external power, um, maybe it is all that in a bag of chips. Um, so I, I, I winged it, and like I said, I got the AudioQuest Evergreen cable with it. A whopping $60 worth of 6-foot cable. Um, so, I mean, that's what the AudioQuest would recommend. <laughs> so, whatever. I went with it. Um, just thought I would try it. So, so I, that way I could, you know, go from the output on here, hook it in RCA to the back of my... Uh, Odyssey Deckard here, um, which, if you don't know a whole lot about the Deckard, you can look into it. Uh, the audio science review on it is a little lackluster, I don't know. A lot of the stuff they've mentioned about um, distortion figures and stuff like that, I, I don't, I haven't heard it. I really only, the most I have to use it on is medium gain. I think they were talking about the high gain, but whatever. You can look into it. Audio uh, Odyssey Deckard, unfortunately, is discontinued, but I do think it's a very quality, quality amp DAC. Um, either way, so I used that, figured I would uh, hook it up to the RCA input versus, you know, using the UC, uh, USB so that, in theory, the Dragonfly Cobalt would be a standalone DAC, and then my Decker would be a standalone amp. So, I hooked it up, and um, upon doing so, um, as you know, anybody would, whenever you uh, 
using a, a line, using a DAC like a USB DAC, then a line out to your um, amplifier, you want it to have a fixed output. So you you want to have the highest you know a full output from the DAC, and then you know uh, modulate your volume from your amplifier. That only makes sense, right? Well, that's what AudioQuest tells you to do. It is, as far as I know, from what I've looked into on here, because they actually, they advertise it, um, and people said they used it this way, but on the back of the box, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, on the back, they advertise it, so, um, you probably won't be able to see it here, but it says this is how you can connect it, so you can do a direct um, plug into laptop, computer, anything like that. Use the, the USB C adapter, a Lightning USB 3 camera kit from, you know, and a Lightning device. Uh, and then, that's weird, they kind of list that one twice. But it said, and then you can plug it directly into headphones, into powered speakers, or to an amplifier or receiver. Which is what I did. So, but upon doing so, this thing is absolutely nasty. It has a terrible high pitch noise um, whenever you have it at maximum volume, and ha you even using the line out. Um, so if you have it completely silent, uh, you want to talk about noise floor or distortion. It's there. Um, I want to see if they mention anything about it in the book here. Regardless, on the back of the, the, the box, on the product, they say that it's, you know, you can connect it into a power amp. So that's what I did, and I've seen people online use it that way. Uh, I, don't, I don't think they talk much about... They just talk about how to get it, like, hooked up and working and so forth. So... Yeah, it's really not a whole lot here. Yeah, all I do is talk about that. Either way, the way I see it, any, um, you know, amp deck where the salt will uh, change its output depending on, um, what the demand is. So, if I hook up a, you know. 16 ohm set of headphones it'll drive those accordingly to you know whatever it can hook up a 300 it'll drive those accordingly to what it can if i'm using a line out connection if i'm hooking it up through you know an rca it'll drive that it'll recognize that that's not that it doesn't have really a a load like a heavy load on it you're not having to power it you're just having to provide the full signal at the full you know magnitude or volume and then the amplifier does the amplification. From what I can gather, this, even when you're using it as a preamp or a standalone DAC, so to speak, or trying to use it that way, it is still amplifying that signal. And that what I was hearing was that amplifier distortion. And it's bad. It's really bad. Um, so. The prospect of using this as a standalone deck to have MQA unfolding and on the topic of MQA and stuff like that, um, it doesn't, it's not a full, because um, they have uh, renderers and then they have whatever. I, I forget exactly what they call it, but they're like a full MQA renderer. This ain't it because it can't do that. The, um, the pass through option for him, uh, MQA in title. You can't turn that on because this can't fully render it. It can't do a full hardware render. The software in title has to do its first little unpack and then this has to do uh, an unfold. And I don't know, man. This, the, the whole master quality thing. I, I'm not a big fan of it. Now, the more I think about it, it would be nice just to have the full resolution file. Um, and if I can't stream it on the go, I can't stream it on the go. I can just listen to you know CD quality, whatever, and then let me come home and play my 24 bit 192 kilohertz that that would be a lot better in my opinion but you know they're trying to pinch pennies <sighs> and uh 
Yeah. So there, there's something to be said for Cubuzz on that standpoint. I just think Title has a better uh, library and interface. Either way, that's my two cents on that topic. Um, so yeah, that was my experience with that. Um, I'm going to try to uh, include a clip, um, hopefully right here, uh, with the sound that I get from this on the amplifier. And what I'm going to do is I'll listen, play it at full volume, and then I'll, then I'll try to see at what point that distortion stops. Um, so I'm just going to lower the volume and see if that, that high pitch noise ever goes away. Um, and I heard it on both headphones I have at home here because I have my LCD2s um, and the IAMs here. Um, I heard it on both. I heard it on the IAMs sooner, but I heard them both pretty much instantly. There's there's no... It's, it's just a noisy, noisy mess. All right, so here we go. What I'm going to do is, again, got the... Um, take it, you know, my desk is a mess. It's not a mess. It's just speed up. But um, putting it on... High gain, maximum volume. It's all the way up. And what I want to do is I'm going to uh, just hit turn the volume. It's at 100%, and I'm just going to click it to where it gives us a little ding, because that seems to in particular trigger the noise. Um, so I'm going to do that first. Right now, I'm doing it just from the Deckard itself. Um, it's not doing the line in yet. We'll do that right afterwards. So doing that now. Hopefully this works. All right, got my phone in the cup. It's gonna ding it. Okay, just wanna pause it real quick. Um, well, as it turns out, I don't even have to ding it. It's just set on the line out right now and uh, the deck is at high maximum. Same as it was when it had the USB input, and as you can see, it says Dragonfly Cobalt there. I'm going to hit it. It's especially bad. So, yeah, obviously, um, there is some issues. So, that's that's what it sounds like on the line out, um, at least for me. So, all right, and just for consistency, I said I was going to do it at lower volumes. I just didn't feel the need to do it a second ago because... It made the noise even just um, at idle. So right now I have the Deckard at low gain, um, max volume, so that we have an output on low gain. Uh, and the cobalt, mind you, is at zero. There's no output from the cobalt. So I'm going to click it at zero and just listen. So I'm going to go up to like 10. 20. I can still hear it. I hope that's coming through on the camera. It's 50, 71, 88, and 100. And you can, I don't know if you can hear it, but they're like almost like little crackles and just, just, just little things. And if I slide this, it kind of makes this funny little noise whenever I slide it. Okay, I'm going to put in a high gain again just to do the same thing, so hopefully just make sure it comes through. Alright, I'm going to click it at zero. See, it still makes that same noise. But, see? And then if I hear like a, this crazy scrubbing sound. So that that's what's happening. Just again, trying to be transparent and show everything um, as it is. So just want to get all that in there. Um, so I will be returning the AutoQuest Dragonfly and by proxy and um, even if I was keeping it for mobile use, there, there's no way, no way in the world I would be keeping the, this uh, AudioQuest cable, Blue Gene cables all the way. Um, that's my two cents on that one too. So, that's it. Um, the I'm not going to give a, a score on the scale of one to ten. Um, 
what I would say is that the Dragonfly Cobalt is not worth buying. It's it's not worth your purchase. You don't need to spend as much money. This particular product isn't doing anything additional for you. If you want to get a um, Dragonfly product, that's fine. An AutoQuest Dragonfly product. I would recommend starting with a um, a black. To see if the black is shot. Um, I might do the same. I might see about potentially getting a black. I need to see what would be compatible with my uh, Android. Because I don't really need anything for a laptop or anything like that. I just use desktop solutions at home. Um, and that that's just what I use. Um, a red might be worth considering, but it's also really worth doing your due diligence and checking other products that um, are from different companies. Uh, there's a whole lot of hype behind the AudioQuest Dragonfly Fly Cobalt. I don't think it's warranted. Not at all. Because that extra power that it supposedly gets it is not really usable. Um, I will say that I did use um, temporarily a pair of Shure uh, 1840s. Those are open back, like mixing, mastering cans. Um, and my my cross reference for that was um, a uh, Focusrite Scarlet. Uh, my, my, this is was my brother's setup. Um, so he uses that. He, he's actually into music production. So he has a little home studio that he uses. So um, he uses the headphone output on that. And I use this with it for a, a little bit of time. Um, so now I don't know all the specs on the uh, focus right as far as the headphone output goes. But uh, I hook this up to the USB. It has... I, you can unscrew the, the quarter inch and plug it into the 3.5 on that particular set of headphones. I plugged it into this. I'm actually kind of expecting to have a little higher um, output um, on those headphones and versus what he was getting on the um, the interface, the Focusrite Scarlet Audio interface because I just in my head assumed that the, the output um, as far as power wasn't as much on uh, the headphone outs on the front there, um, but I was wrong. So the output that was on the um, the audio interface was a little one better. It sounded more defined um, and a little less. I'm gonna call it screechy because um, this one sounded like what it is. It was a little more effortless, I guess. The uh, Dragonfly, when I plugged it in, um, it got close to as loud, um, but it actually cost more than the interface did, because the interface is like 220 bucks. This is $300. Um, and this, it, it just felt like it was trying a lot harder, like it was having a lot harder time. Um, I didn't sit down and listen to it for very long to try to pick out any, you know, distortion from it. But I was I was running it at a. I think I was. I don't know if I was running it at 100 percent or I had to knock it down from 100 percent a little bit because it just didn't sound good anymore. Um, but uh, the the thing about it is the interface. While I know it's not portable like this is, so you're paying something, a an amount of money for the portability of that. The audio interface does a lot more than than the uh, Dragonfly can. It's it's set up for studio use. It's you know has inputs and outputs and for you know studio monitors and everything. So that is a much bigger product, really a, a more well-made product because there's a lot more to it, um, and it still costs less money than the Cobalt. Some food for thought there. So this. I would say it's a portable only solution to begin with and don't spring for the cobalt. A lot of people will tell you that red is at most you should get. Um, at most, yes. The black 
if you want to get audio quest and you want that really s small form factor and need it for mobile use it's worth i would recommend personally try the black first try it first see how it works for you if it does it what you need it to do i'd say go for it because if the red is anything like the blue in terms of that output and that distortion on that that um extra output it has that that you know 2.1 versus the 1.5 on the black uh, voltage uh, it ain't worth it it still isn't worth it it would be the same situation for the red as it is for the the cobalt and that uh, MQA unfolding if you're using if you're using it from a uh, a PC uh, a MacBook or whatever a non mobile device because from what I can tell the mobile device doesn't register that that master quality um, or those MQA files correctly the black one actually does support MQA too. They put a firmware update out for it, so the black supports MQA. Which before I got this one, I did a little more, little more research. I didn't know that because you can update um, both the black and the red to support MQA. It doesn't have to be the cobalt, so that's an important thing to know. Um, but that's my two cents. Hopefully, I touched on everything. I've been recording. This is almost an hour-long video. This is a Zeos level video. Either way, I have to hope this was uh, helpful to somebody. Um, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to throw them, throw them in the comments. Like I said, I haven't had this very long. I will not have it past the next few days. Um, but, again, hope this was helpful to someone. Any questions, put them in the comments. If you like it, feel free to like it. If you dislike it, feel free to dislike it. I don't do a lot of videos. Hopefully, hoping to change that, changing the name of the channel, because I just wing the whole all that tech thing out there so I'm gonna put that on here and maybe I'll actually make some more videos and maybe I'll get an actual camera one of these days um, but thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you all again soon ciao for now